So dock um, has been used in, or is used in Chinese medicine. Yeah. It's uh, the root, uh, dried root is a really great tea for cleaning um, uh, yeah, internal organs. So all you do is just cut it, uh, dock it up, dry it, air, sun, oh, air dry it, not, yeah. not in direct sun. And it's not a particularly, it's a medicinal tea, it's not a particularly tasty tea. But um, uh, the leaves are great as a cooked vegetable. Yeah, I and you, you can actually make, um, uh, use them as like replacements of vine leaves uh, to, to, to make, uh, to wrap food, dolmadis and things like that. Um, and we, this is the roasted or toasted dry ground um, dock seeds. So the, the seeds are here. So if you dry those out uh, and then lightly toast them, you've got a really great, um, have a smell of that. Um, yeah, have a, have a smell. It's, um, yeah, I, I don't have a good sense of smell. Okay. Um, but anyway. But they're good for, yeah. for like adding to cookies or cakes and things like that. I'm more interested in finding something and eating it, bang. Oh, right, okay, so on the bushwalk, this one here is the sow thistle. It's highly bitter, but these little soft um, flower buds yeah. are, are almost like um, a little chewing gum, but a very okay. bitter chewing gum. Now, okay. with bitter, um, the more bitters we have in our diet, yeah. the less cravings for sugar we have, gotcha. and the more sugar we have, the less cravings for bitter. So. I always have sour thistle or dandelion, munch on a flower, or with these sour thistles, munch on some of these seed seed heads or flower buds. Yes, yep, yep. And that um, co is constantly giving me a taste for bitter. And a, and a, uh, an it's interest. not unpleasant? It's not, no, I, but I have trained my diet. Yes. Because like, you know, traditional Western diet where I started is very high in sugar and it's very yeah. acidic. Yeah. Whereas a lot of these plants, particularly like lemon balm, uh, are alkalizing. So this is a really good tea to have. Right. Um, if you smell that, it's quite citrusy, yeah. lemony and citrusy. Can I ask one, something about this? Yes. Out of all the thistles, yes. I think I see this around the place. Yeah. Are uh, any of these uh, poisons? If I picked the wrong one, no. there's no problem. All of the thistles are edible. That's what I wanted, um, yeah. This is another version of it. Um, so it's got quite a different leaf profile. Yeah, I've heard of milk thistle. Well, it's, but I it's similar this to this. A bit like that. Yeah, yeah, it's similar. It's related. Yep. The spear thistle here is also um, edible, but obviously not the prickle, prickly bit. Yeah. You shave all the prickles down, use, uh, eat the, the mucilaginous... Uh, stem okay. and also the roots are delicious once they're cleaned up you can chop them up and um, uh, sprinkle balsamic vinegar or red wine vinegar on them and they're delicious raw right. um, but if you were just out foraging there's obviously wild apples to eat um, so those are the domestic ones that have gone wild that's right yep. exactly um, uh, there's this is burdock root so often when I'm camping um, I will uh, find burdock, uh, which only grows wild in high rainfall areas like this, for Australian standards anyway. The burdock root is, it's called gobu in Japan, and the root is really great roasted vegetable. So I wrap the, the roots up in the leaves and cook them on the coals in the fire. And you um, eat the leaf as well? You can eat the leaf as or well. Or you just you, use that to wrap them? I usually, yeah, the, the root is the best part. Right. No, I've got this in the garden. Um, yeah, so that's ribwort, plantain. Uh, what we, do you eat them? Yeah, well, these are a medicinal plant. You can use them as a first aid. So if you get a cut or a sting, you grab some leaves, chew them up, and put them on the cut, and it cleans the blood, it, it thickens the blood, so it's a coagulant. Um, but what we do in our household is collect the seed heads, and it, they're a wild psyllium husk. So we don't buy psyllium, we, we cultivate it ourselves. And this is a very common plant 
Um, and so psyllium husks are really important for gut health, so it's a good fibre for, for the gut um, and to have on your breakfast cereal or something like that. So you just catch bits of seeds and... That's right, just dry, put them in a paper bag, so uh, put them in a dry area, uh, wait for them to be fully dry and then just crunch them up, uh, break them all up into a jar and store them. This um, is chickweed here, which we eat all through the winter. It's full of vitamin C. It's, it comes out when we're all getting colds. We eat this all through the summer, uh, sorry, winter. And this is chickweed powder, so we dry it to have it year round. Again, we put it on our cereal or in our porridge. We put it in cookies, um, but it's just another really great edible weed powder, which you can then store for a long period of time. So these are out for six. This is not a very good example. In the winter, when it's cold, they're luscious and thick, and you just have a mouthful, and it just it feels so good to eat them. Um, We've got vetch here, which is one of the oldest cultivated um, plants in the world. So this was uh, cultivated as a nitrogen fixer. Um, the vetch is, is a relative of um, peas, um, and it's, there's a little lovely pea-like flower. So great in salads. Um, and then the little tenderly, uh, tender new shoots are fantastic in a salad as well. So you'd put like the little bits, my hands have been working, so they're not uh, too terribly, uh, they're not cook's hands. But um, yeah, so these lovely tender bits are great in a salad. With um, the sour thistle flowers and, and buds, um, this flatweed here, which isn't looking particularly attractive, this is what uh, in Greece they use as the wild horta dish. Um, if you get good examples of this, uh, harvest and clean, wash all the leaves, um, cook it up once, change the water, um, squeeze them out, so cook, cook them in water for 10 minutes, squeeze them out, chop them across, drizzle uh, oli uh, olive oil and lemon juice and a pinch of salt, and then in Greece traditionally they put pine nuts on the top. You get a beautiful um, uh, like a cleanser, like a palate cleanser before the meal, or you or you put it through as a cooked vegetable with something else. You might have it with fish or something like that. What is it? Remember, we cooked up a whole lot of them. Yeah, we cooked up that one, that yes. one, and another one. There Beautiful. was three. And maybe dandelion, was it? The, the yeah. house smelled of. This is the oh. south thistle. Yeah. It was that Greek, one, that was one. Was Greek or Maltese? Maltese, Maltese yes, Maltese yeah. that's right. So she, she said they uh, ate that after the war. That's right. And it's even in cafes today, apparently, um, there is the, uh, the, um, the grandparents will go out and forage the, the bitter greens yeah. and they'll make the horta. So if you go in and order a meal, they'll bring it to you like they bring jugs of water and glasses yeah. here. It's yeah. like a little free... Just a little appetizing dish, but it is re if it's made well, it's really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we, well, I, we, I cooked it. We, we I tried to, to make it, but I ate it once. But that was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to bring down your blood pressure or something yeah. like that too. Well, bitters are fantastic for general health, yeah. and the more bitters we have, the less cravings for sugar we have. And the yeah. more sugar we have, the less cravings for bitters we have. So our Western diet has really moved yeah. away from having yeah. bitter greens. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. why... So we didn't have a taste. We didn't have a sort of a taste for... No. Nah. Yes, nah. exactly. So it, probably developed I've taste. cultivated a taste for yeah. bitters and I'm, now I crave them. So oh, I'm yeah. in the garden, yeah. I'm always nibbling a dandelion leaf. Yeah. And that's a good way of building up that, yeah. uh, your palate. Oh, yeah. yeah. This well, one. I had, I had a lot of milk thistles in my pipe, but I used to give it to my budgerigar and canaries. This, yeah, <laughs> nice. This one's um, salsify, and in middle um, in the Middle Ages in Europe, this was the preferred um, preferred over the carrot. I haven't brought a root in, but this is the flower. It's like quite a spiky. Um, purple flower, but the root, uh, yeah, is a lovely root vegetable um, to roast. Bit like 
Jerusalem artichokes that they can make you a bit gassy because they've got inulin in them. Hello, Nick. How are you? Yeah, so, um, so you, to ferment the roots to make a pickle is, um, it helps digest the inulin. But they are really delicious um, vegetable. I've got them naturalized in the garden. Elder is, elder is a wonderful um, flower and berry for ferments. For, for drinks? For drinks, yeah. Either medicinal uh, ferments or elder cider, what I call elder cider, people call it elder champagne, is the, is the easiest alcoholic ferment. And you can put on 10 days before, say, a wedding or a birthday or a celebration, and it'll be ready. And it's just a lovely, light beautifully s smelling drink but the elder uh, is always uh, attributed to the health of the woman of the house so they call it they call the elder lady elder and my partner Meg um, always takes her monthly blood to the elder to feed it and they say in our traditional um, heritage that if the elder in the garden is well the lady of the house is well um, and it's and in, it's got a white flower. Hasn't it's it? a beautiful white flower and a very dark black berry, um, and it's used. It's an incredible antioxidant and vitamin C. Um, you can make medicinal, like for sore throats. You can make um, syr syrups, like cough, cough syrups and, and cold syrups. Well, I've got one, one in my garden, and it has sort of like it's got berries, but the flower is not white. There's a native um, elderberry, and that's got more sort of orangey, reddy berries. Yeah, it might be the native one. Yeah, I don't know whether a bird's just dropped it in, you know, and it's grown. Right, okay. So this is, I don't know if you know the cherry plum, but that's the first, after the locut, it's the first fruit of the season. It usually comes out in December. Um, but that's, it's a wild, it's like a, a little tiny plum that's, uh... Is this canola, <laughs> is it? That uh, that, that's a wild brassica, so um, it's known as wild radish. Um, yeah, so... Did you see yellow fields of that? Yes. That, that's, that yeah. That. No, it's not, but that, yeah, canola is, um, yeah, an agricultural plant. These are all weeds like um, the uh, lemon balm here is a fantastic tea to alkalize the, the blood so a lot of our again our diet is quite acidic so if you have this in the garden or it does it has naturalized in this area and you make a, a an infusion keeping the lid on to not let the volatile um, oils go um, this is a really great very um, lovely soft tasting tea that you can make to help um, alkalize the blood um, obviously this one I brought along it's the only non-edible on the table but people do um, confuse it for wild carrot which we don't have here it's hemlock and hemlock um, was given to Socrates uh, as a punishment uh, by death um, back in the, uh, it does. It's the only poisonous one I hear on the table. Oh, yeah, because actually you hear that in the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. But the wild fennel and hemlock look totally different plants, and this is wild fennel seeds which we use on all our breads. Have a smell of that. Um, so we put all that. We collect enough wild fennel each year to, to use for all our baking needs, but also cakes and biscuits and lots of... You wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to use that no. for steak, would you? No, but the, the reason why I put them together is that at the end of the year, when they, the plants die off and only the seed heads and the stalks are remaining, they look identical. And so if you don't smell the, the plant and smell the seed and smell that aniseed-like or licorice-like smell. Yeah, that's aniseed. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so you've just got to be really careful in the winter months foraging for... Because that's when you go out to collect the wild fennel. But people have 
inadvertently collected uh, wild hemlock or hemlock and um, and uh, become quite sick. So do you sort of cultivate the weeds or do you just No, search? no, I, I'm a gardener so I grow a lot of vegetables but throughout the year, particularly in the winter when there's not many vegetables growing, yeah. I, our family eats uh, and processes into things like the stinging nettle tea um, a lot of the weeds because they are highly um, nutritional yeah. and they are like the chickweed which is full of vitamin C they're giving things to us that we're not getting in the winter months yeah. no, so yeah. I grow veggies most of the year but then we do lots of foraging through the, the winter months and also in the winter councils aren't out spraying yeah. um, so it's much safer to wild harvest um, these plants the other reason for eating these plants is that they're free they um, they, as I said before, a lot of modern plants have been uh, engineered for shelf life and for commerce reasons, but not necessarily for health reasons. So a lot of the nutrients that you get in, in these plants aren't in our modern food system. Exactly. So you're getting gut microbes that you wouldn't normally get from an industrial food diet. But... Um, that's buckshorn plantain. It's 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 a ribwort like this one. I've seen them. I've seen that around. Yeah, and this is this is one of the plantains that you can actually use the tender leaves in a salad. Whereas if you were going to use um, plantain, you would cook that because the leaves are quite uh, tough. Whereas this is there's lovely tender tender leaves that you can use for um, eating raw in a salad. So I've got that in my property. I've been keeping it like for weeds. Yes, yeah. This is a wonderful, wonderful plant. And for gut health, this is plantains are really important. Um, yeah, yeah. To make for your breakfast cereal, the the ribwort plantain or cereal um, It's really great. Um, the spear thistle, which is also called the Scotch thistle, this that root, this is only a first year plant, but as a second year plant, before it goes to flower, it's um it's got a beautiful uh, root, yeah. But before it goes to flower in the second year, because they're biennials, it's got a really big root, like a mid-sized carrot, and if you roast it or even dice it up and wash it dice it up and then splash red wine vinegar over it or balsamic vinegar it's really good raw but this is a there is fields of these um, you know farmers don't like them but it's really good food in terms of yeah that's right but even even if you with your knife like the, the in terms of gut gut health food like if you've got things like Crohn's disease or something like that this, you sh like a big thistle that gets to that length, you can shave all that all the way down, get rid of it all, cut off the green <laughs> mucolaginous -y stuff, and and eat it for to line help line um, your stomach um, and soothe the stomach. But the roots are really good as well, and the, the roots clean um, heavy metals out of your gut. But that that's the edible part, and it's um, very much like eating uh, artichoke. So it's related to the artichoke fa family. So spear thistles, you can eat uh, the stems and the roots. The roots roasted or raw. Um, yeah. Stinging nettle, of course, is an absolute um, wonderful iron-rich food. Great for teas and soups. Yeah, we make it as a tea, dry it for as a tea. But it's wonderful in winter soups um, or stews. I once with um, anemia just having nettle. You cured yourself of anemia. anemia. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Oh, okay. And vitamin C, so you absorb the iron. And hawthorn berries, um, we make a fruit leather each year, really good for high blood pressure. So um, used in Chinese and Western medicine for generations. Um, Hawthorne has naturalized in the district. It's a preferred habitat tree for ringtail possums, so it's a 
become an important local habitat tree for them. Uh, for them, yeah, but really good food for us. Um, and we make wild apple and hawthorn fruit jerky or fruit leather each year, and it lasts all through the, the winter. And little traces of vitamin C, but really good for high blood pressure. It regulates the heart, hawthorn. It's a really wonderful plant. So how do you have that? Just so so as a tea, so here with the rose hips or the briar rose, we would make a tea in winter where we steep some of these, uh, some of the hawthorn berries and some of the rose hips. We put them together and we might put some blackberry, blackberry leaf in as well. Blackberry leaf is very similar to uh, raspberry leaf. It's a similar sort of uh, property, so very good for women's health in particular, um, for urinary tract infections. Um, but yeah, both of them are antioxidant and um, and traces of vitamin C. But dried, they can store. You can what, store them for the winter. We're, we're trying to get my son off cigarettes, and we we bought some herbal tobacco. Yep. Do you, do you think that sort of I, would be harmful? Or I cured. Be... I I treated my addiction to cigarettes 25 years ago by using herb cigarettes because I, I needed to, to deal with the, the, the drug and the habit. So I dealt with the drug first while continuing the habit and then after three weeks I threw them away. So, Hello everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that, well, anybody who's interested in learning about biodynamics, uh, please come and join us here. We've got Liz from Trewella Farm. Yeah. I think I got my